Those include the tetracyclines, so that's doxycycline, tetracycline, and there's also a drug called tigacycline. And so, and they, what's great about these drugs is that they have an incredible broad range of activity. You know, they, they can, they get gram negatives, gram positives, they can get chlamydia, they can get the rickettsia. They have a really broad, broad use, but they're just not sidle, so we really don't use them that much in the hospital. The second class of drugs that's toxic that also is very useful because it's very good for the atypical are the macrolides. Those include azithromycin, clarithromycin, and, and plain old clarithros. These also have good activity against gram positives and also against atypicals. They tend to be on the uh, static side and so are not as, as popular and use, but they're, they're very effective drugs for in certainly outpatient setting. Nasalid is a, a very effective drug for MRSA. It has one advantage over the others is that it's oral, so you can actually give it to somebody as an outpatient. It, it is technically static, so it's not as effective, and it does have toxicities related to long-term use. It basically suppresses the bone marrow, but it's very effective against skin and soft tissue infections. So there's linazolid, and there's some other ana analogs that are coming out that have better pharmacodynamics where you can give it once a day and things like that. But they basically do the same thing. So in terms of clindamycin, clindamycin is sort of standing on its own. It has two characteristics. One is it, it's very good for the anaerobes in the belly, so Bacteroides fragilis, but it also is good against staph and strep. So it could be used in somebody who's penicillin allergic or um, including community-acquired MRSA. So if you have somebody who has community-acquired MRSA, they can't take sulfa, then clinda is an option. A person comes in with classic pneumonia symptoms, which would be chest pain, cough, productive, and they're pretty ill with pneumonia. You do a chest x-ray, and there's an infiltrate. So then you want to decide a couple of things very quickly, what you want to know about this person. You want to know from a host perspective, have they been in the hospital recently? Do they come from a healthcare facility or are they just coming in off the street and are otherwise healthy and have no underlying conditions? So if this person has not been in a healthcare facility, the organisms, uh, this, so we already defined the syndrome and the pathogens we have to think about are strep pneumonia, Klebsiella, and if it's in the flu season, you also have to think of Staph aureus because Staph aureus can be an opportunist after a severe upper respiratory viral infection, most commonly flu. And finally, you have to think about Legionella. The other atypicals, mycoplasma and chlamydia, would be covered anyhow by the drug you're going to use for Legionella, but they tend to be much milder as clinical presentations. So to cover strep pneumo and to cover the other organisms, the antibiotic choices are really quite extensive. You want to know if they're penallergic or not. So if they don't have an allergy, you're going to want to have a beta-lactam. And uh, ceftriaxone would be an excellent choice. It gets into the lungs very well. It covers strep pneumo very well. It covers Klebsiella very well. But it would not cover Legionella, which is where you would add azithromycin. So you could add a, a macrolide. or you could use a quinolone. Moxifloxacin or levofloxacin would cover both the Legionella as well as the strep pneumo and the Klebsiella pneumonia. So someone who's penicillin allergic, moxi or levofloxacin would be a good choice. What are we leaving out? Because that's always a good thing to think about. So strep pneumo still is very sensitive, but with pneumonia we don't worry too much yet about resistance to ceftriaxone. And if Staph aureus is a consideration, then MRSA could be a possibility, and we would not be covering that as well. So then a drug like vancomycin would have to be brought into play. So you don't do that right away, but you just think about what is it that you might not be covering optimally, which would be a resistant strep pneumo. And right now the rate, rates are still low enough but that could change in another five or ten years. It could well be that we have to deal with more resistant strep pneumo. And the staph aureus really would be related to the winter, you know, and flu epidemics. Now, if on the other hand, this person says they, they've been re rehabilitating in a nursing home with, uh, for a broken hip, 
we then have to be concerned about nosocomial bacterial infections, and that's where Staph aureus, and particularly MRSA, rises to the top, as well as a whole range of gram-negatives, the Enterobacteriaceae, Pseudomonas, and more importantly, gram, highly resistant gram-negatives in those two categories. So then your choice of antibiotics is completely different. You don't worry about Legionella in that setting, but you do want to cover MRSA, so you start with Vanco. And at our place, we would use Piperacillin Tazobactam as your broad coverage for gram-negatives, as well as gram-positives and anaerobes. In some places, they might use a carbapenem, meropenem, imipenem. At our at U University Hospital, these drugs are restricted, and we tend to reserve them for patients where we know they have highly resistant organisms already. Now, if they're um, penicillin allergic, and we can't use piperacillin or, or carbapenem, uh, then we can use a quinolone, or we could use an aminoglycoside. So quinolone would be Cipro, or Moxi, or Levo, or we could use Gentamicin, Tobramycin, or Amikacin as our aminoglycoside. And uh, hopefully our patient will get better.